Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be building a small network with a switch, a router and two PCs. So here's our topology, PCA, PCB, switch, a router. So first we're going to start with PCA. Let's give it our IP address. Two ways of doing this, we'll show you the first way. Right click on the network icon, open network settings, go into Ethernet adapters, click on change adapter options. And then inside here, you'll see all your network adapters. Click on our LAN card. And here's where we can change the IPv4 address. Click on IPv4 properties and put in the IP address. So this is PCA, so it's going to be 192.168.10.50. Standard subnet mask and the gateway 192.168.10.1. Don't worry about DNSs today, don't need them. So click OK, OK, and close these dialog boxes because that's everything's all set. So now let us flick over to PCB and set up the configuration on PCB. Different process this time just to show you different ways of doing it. Just go straight to settings or control panel and network and internet and, this, and then same place, ethernet and then change adapter options. Windows 7, you can just go straight through your control panel, but this is one way to get it in Windows 10 as well. Same thing again, LAN adapter, go down to IPv4, click on it, click on properties, and this is PCB. So we want 192.168.20.50. Standard mask and our gateway of .1, because that's going to be the router. Click OK, OK, and close these dialog boxes, and we're good to go. All right, so we're booting up our router now. I fast forwarded through the boring bits. Always answer no to the setup question. OK, so we're in user mode. We type enable to get into privileged exec. We go configure terminal to get into global config. Now, the very first thing we need to do is set up a host name, router one. We also want to help us with typo, so we want to disable domain lookup. That'll speed up any typo as we type. Next, we need to set up basic security. So we need our enable secret password. We're going to use class as a standard. Now we're going to go in and set up our console password. So line console zero, password Cisco, always use standard passwords in a lab environment, and the command to log in. We're also going to allow remote access. So line V2I 0 to 4, password Cisco, and the word login again. These passwords are in clear text, so we want to set them up to be encrypted. Just simple encryption, over the shoulder encryption. Always have a banner as a warning to keep away people so that they know that if anyone accesses your system, they are informed that they should be not be accessing your system and they're doing the wrong thing. Notice here as we're typing, a few interfaces are going down and line cards being initialized. The prompt keeps getting trapped up halfway through. So it's a very useful command to help us with that. So we're going to go into line console zero and we're going to set up logging synchronous. This means that every time a message appears on the screen, it's going to return the cursor exactly where we need it to be without being trapped at the end of that console message. All right, we've set up the basic settings for security. Let us have a look at what type of interfaces we have just to make sure we get the right syntax. So we've got two gigabits and two serials and a management. So gigabit one is for PCA and gigabit zero is for PCB. So I'll start with one and give it an IP address 192.168.10.1 because that's the default gateway for PCA and a standard subnet mask. And we, all sh and we need to enable that interface. Next, we're going to go into gigabit zero. 
Now, we, the up arrow is a nice quick way of getting to where we need to go without having to retyping everything. You get up to 15 lines of history in the up arrow. So just press the up arrow, change that to a 2, and up arrow again for no shut. Notice too, when the message comes on, our prompt is returned nicely, so we can just keep on typing. Oh, I think I forgot something here. We should always give descriptions to our interfaces, so we know exactly what that interface is trying to do. So, Gigabit 1 connects to PC A and the switch. And Gigabit 0 connects to PC B. Once again, using the up arrow for previous commands. All right, so looks like our router is good to go. Let's check our interfaces. Whoops. There we go. Both our gigabit interfaces set up and ready to go for connectivity. We should also set up the switch. So let's give the switch an IP address as well. The only reason you give an IP address to a switch is for management. So we want to be able to manage that switch remotely. So enable, configure terminal, give it a host name. Now when you're configuring the switch, you don't configure a physical interface. You go in and you configure the virtual interface. VLAN 1 is our virtual interface, and we're going to give that an IP address so that we can manage this device remotely. We're also going to disable domain lookups for, to help us with our typos. So we go interface VLAN 1 and give it the IP address of 192.168.10.20. That's a good IP address on that range, not conflicting with anything, and that will allow us to manage this device remotely. So we enable that interface and it comes up just nicely. All right, let's switch back over to our PCB now and do some basic testing and see if everything, make sure everything works. So we type ipconfig, verify IP address. There it is, 192.168.20.50. The first thing we need to verify is our default gateway is correct. We can ping interface gigabit 0 slash 0 on R1. So that's perfect. We can also ping the other interface. So we've got full connectivity of PCB to router 1. And look at that. Now we can get all the way across to PCA. So there's full connectivity between PCA and PCB. Now, oh, but we can't ping the switch. So we program the switch with the correct IP address. PCB can ping PCA. But for some reason, we can't ping the switch. There must be something we forgot when we set up that switch. Let's, have, let's go and have a quick look and see what we missed. Ah, see, we gave IP address and a subnet mask, but you always need three things for connectivity in IPv4. IP address, subnet mask, and a default gateway. In Windows, at each PC, we gave all three things. And now we need to give that third thing, the default gateway, on the switch as well. Because it's like a host, it's management. So we've given it its default gateway. Let's give it a ping, and see what we get. There it is. Now we have full connectivity. PCA, PCB, the router and the switch, everything can talk to each other. And there we have it. We have now successfully programmed our simple network, one router, one switch, and two PCs. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe Click the notification bell. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment with what you'd like me to make for my next video. I'll see you in the next one.